outside there's a f***ing moose or a buffalo or some s*** they're fighting. Do you know what this is? I bet you don't. Chances are, most of you have never seen this tree chonk before. I'll tell you in a second, but first, quick question. If you had to take a blind guess, how many species of mammals do you think are in the world? Think of all the ones you've seen in your entire life and try to imagine what number that would add up to. The answer? 6,495 and counting, and that's just the mammals. Add in animals in general, and we're talking millions. Which brings me to my next point. I for, uh, um, uh, Armadale, Armageddon, Ooh. some shit like that. Uh, Illuminati from Manigasco. What the fuck is that? Damn, that's from Manigasco. Something from the Bronx. Oh, that's super nasty. One of the fuck is right there on 14th Street. This man is a wordsmith. Laugh at my mans all you want, but understand if school doesn't teach it to you and you don't see it in a zoo or on National Geographic and it's not the animal of the week on Reddit, you'd have no way of knowing some animals even exist. Which is why I can personally guarantee that you haven't seen or heard of all 10 animals in this video. You might know three or four, Animal Planet veterans might get six or seven, and hey, some of y'all might know eight just from watching me long enough. But I promise you there's gonna be at least one animal I talk about that you've never heard of before. I put that on my hairline and I wear this hat every video for a reason. So let's make a game out of it. If I show you something new you lose and you gotta comment what animal was the one to stump you and for 90 percent of y'all the game ends right here because what do you think this is some kind of monkey maybe an obese lemur or an ai generated sloth you're not gonna believe this it's a koala okay not really but koala is actually closer than anything else i said this porky, dead-eyed struggle monkey is the bear cuscus, -cus, and despite looking like nature made it on a deadline with spare parts, it's actually a marsupial. This thing that looks like a Madagascar understudy is more related to kangaroos, devils, and quokkas than it is to any lemur. And that's about as much as we know about them because we haven't been able to figure out much more. They've essentially been gatekept from the rest of the world, only found on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi and remote islands nearby. We have no clue how many overstuffed tree chunguses or chungi are in circulation, and currently only four zoos have this monkey sloth on its roster. Even its name is an identity crisis since Cuscus means possum, meaning on paper, you're looking at a bear possum. But its Latin name is Alurops ursinus, and I didn't take Latin in high school because French was too sexy, but I'm pretty sure that means cat bear. Basically, not even science had a handle on what this off-brain koala was. And they have the same meal plan as them, and since they eat nothing but leaves, they virtually spend their entire lives on quarter playback speed. In fact, this great value lemur spends 5% of its day eating and 63% resting. That's 16 hours a day eating and recovering from eating. That is load management, and boy is this tree chonk a load. They'd probably be cute if their eyes didn't disturb me on a spiritual level. This is a cuscus that has seen some shit. And clearly they never recovered since they're painfully shy and will even cover themselves with leaves if they see you first since they're terrified of humans and only live in the most isolated areas of the forest. Also this is a Dalad bear cuscus and they're a lot cuter, but it also looks like a wombat that got severely laced. But with them being highly rare tree loving marsupial introverts, it makes sense that you've probably never seen them before. But the next animal is probably the biggest one you've never heard of. This animal has been called Six Dissimilarities and it's because it honestly looks like a wildebeest buffalo bear and friends all did a fusion dance and this was the outcome. This absolutely unit is the Talkin, and they can stress the scales at up to 800 pounds of pure confusion. The Talkin is essentially a giga goat, with their closest relatives being the mountain goat and the chamois. And yes, the mountain goat isn't an actual goat because that makes sense. The Sichuan Talkin actually shares a range with the giant panda, and they use that nose to heat up air before it hits their lungs. That nose job of necessity also makes it look like a moose that got too cocky with a beehive. Which is, no joke how they were first described by scientists. I won't do this for every animal, but its Latin name, Budorcus taxicolor, means badger colored cow ox. Interesting. Talkins also sweat oil that smells like burning rubber, and they use this to mark their territory. They're not known menaces, but they do have their moments. In 2007, a Talkin broke into a man's house and injured him and eight other people, one of them a pregnant woman. And in 2018, during a routine visit from the vet, a Talkin decided he wasn't having it anymore, busting out his enclosure doors and wandering the zoo for an hour, injuring two workers in the process. Basically, he's not a killer, but don't push him. Same thing with the next animal on this list, which might be the second biggest creature you've never heard of. Because the taper is endowed in more ways than one, but we'll get to that, guidelines willing. It's a giant plus size river pig that's actually closer to horses, rhinos, and wild asses. Oh, and donkeys too. They're also the national animal of Belize, shout out to Belize if y'all out there. There's four types of tapers, and a Malaysian one might just strike a nostalgia nerve if you ever played Pokemon, cause Drowsy was actually based on the travel size Oreo elephants of Asia. According to mythology, this taper was associated with the Japanese Baku, and the Baku were said to feed on the dreams of people, especially nightmares. The IRL tapers are pretty chill for what they are, even though they can get into the neighborhood of 700 pounds. 
but they have the dental facilities to bite clean through your arm, so they're definitely one of those F around and find out animals. One family found out when a taper nearly ripped a two year old in half during a supervised visit in a Dublin zoo. But for the most part, this boneless river rhino is just a flaccid faced gentle giant that I kinda wish the world was more aware of. I mean, just look at the teeth on this little guy. You can't tell me that's not cute. Speaking of babies and where they come from, tapers must have made a deal with the devil we don't know about, since they have a fifth leg long enough to use as a tripod or as a DIY back scratcher. When it comes to herbivorous mammals of the world, the taper is the real cock of the walk. And to cleanse your eyes from that unsolicited salami stick, I give you the Sensei Bunny. It's actually a rodent called a Viscacha, and its closest relative is the Chinchilla. But Sensei Bunny just makes sense, especially since this is their default pose. And it's cause where Viscachas live is chilly, it's also kind of cold. So they spend every morning sunbathing and waiting to provide advice to anyone who requires it. Also, I really wish I didn't waste that Chungus joke earlier cause come on, it's right there. And the reason they look like a vertically cheated but horizontally defeated obese wallaby is cause like the chinchilla, the Viscacha has some of the densest fur on the planet. Also, I'll be honest, I knew about the Viscacha. I did not know they could move like that. That's an actual sleeper build. No, like literally, they look like they were built to sleep when they're not passing judgment. This is the look of an animal whose natural predator is a pee test. Brother is faded faded. But yeah, that's a Viscacha. And by the way, if you didn't lose the game already, this next animal almost guarantees you will. Cause yeah, there is an animal in this picture and it's possibly the cutest thing most people know nothing about. And that's cause not only is this animal nocturnal and lives in the Amazon equivalent of a penthouse, during the day it's sleeping in this silk cotton tree camouflaged as a seed pod fiber. And that's how the silky anteater got its name. Cause when your biggest ops are eagles with some of the best vision on earth, that is the best you can do. Like the rest of the anteater family, they have claws. And unlike their cousin the sloth, they actually know how to use them. A sleeping silky will nap with its four legs and claws right next to its face. Really not that different from dozing off with a knife under your pillow. They also can eat 5,000 ants a day and they use that sticky barbed tongue to skewer and trap their protein. And since anteaters have zero teeth, they have stomachs like bird gizzards designed to grind the ants down. Proof that beauty is subjective cause what's cute to us is a harbinger of death and genocide if you're an ant. But I'm not an ant and you probably aren't either so let's just take some time to marvel at this pocket sized baby face dollar brand sloth. And it's not the only token from South America on this list. Cue the Hollow Knight. This might look like a regular run of the mill bird but this little dude has one of the coldest pickup lines in the game. That is a club winged mannequin singing a love song with his feathers. Basically, this small bird from Central and South America has modified flight feathers and by vibrating them, the mannequin shoots a shot with a specialized sound that varies by bird. Some mannequins do a solid violin impression, others sound like fireworks on the 4th of July. Also they make this sound by shaking their feathers a hundred times a second, twice as fast as the mascot for ADHD, the hummingbird. And they do all this while dancing, they're really the Michael Jackson of birds. And I'm not even gonna pretend like I know everything, I didn't even know they existed until like a week ago. And if it wasn't for a certain holiday, this next animal might not exist period. Also I know the whole crab thing has kinda become a meme but we're gonna have to talk about how many animals endgame is a rabbit. This is the second animal here that isn't even remotely related to them, yet stole most of their design. The bilby is another marsupial, meaning this and Snorlax monkey are basically family. The greater bilby can be found in the harsh arid deserts of Australia. Now you might be asking, is there a lesser bilby? And yeah, there was, and now they're dead. So clearly not good enough. The greater bilby's not that far behind since they're endangered, which is pretty wild for an animal that only gets pregnant for two weeks. Not even exaggerating, at about 14 days, bilbies have one of the shortest cook times of any animal. They're also a close relative of the bandicoot, yeah, that's a real animal, the more you know. But yeah, greater bilbies used to inhabit 70% of Australia and today they're barely holding on to less than 20. And a big reason was humans airdropping threats like foxes and feral cats. But these days the word's been getting out about the plight of the appropriation bunny and they can thank the sale of chocolate bilbies on Easter. Easter bilbies started in 93 and they've been part of the culture ever since. It's only right that they replaced rabbits, since rabbits are one of the things that got the bilby population in the mud. But today, there's well over 3,000 of them. Not great, but they're not in the worst spot. They're not as down bad as animal number 8, since there's only hundreds of them left on the planet. Nobody would blame you if you went your entire life without seeing it, since they're shy, endangered, and the only place you can find them is in special underground caves in the Balkans. The Ulm is a salamander that's blind, vampire pale, and happens to be one of the most fundamentally confusing animals in the world. First of all, they're not born blind, but they lose their eyes a couple months after they're born and even grow a layer of skin over them. 
Yet they can still detect and avoid light. The ohm can go a whole decade without food by storing important nutrients in their liver. Usually when you talk about animals that live the longest, you're looking at relatively bigger creatures like elephants, whales, and tortoises. This tiny blind salamander has a lifespan more comparable to us at about 70 years and scientists believe they can max out at well over a century. For reference, there might be an ohm salamander right now that was alive when World War I popped off. A reason for this is, unlike Archduke Ferdinand, the ohm has zero enemies. There was even one ohm on record that straight up didn't move for a whole seven years. The mannequin challenge was in 2016, bro just never stopped playing. Ohms don't be rushing for anybody, which is why they wait once a decade to get laid. Yeah, they only breed about once every 12 years, which is probably why there's only an estimated 400 in stock. They done protected their piece so much that their whole community finna rest in it. And for animal number 9, you're gonna have to hear me out. Hyenas aren't unknown at all, but out of the 4 species of them, the brown hyena is by far the rarest and least talked about. Which sucks, cause they're actually one of my favorite predators in Africa because I love me an underdog. They're not really great hunters and will often get checked by lions and even their own spotted cousins. Not to mention wild dogs and jackals can get their licks in on their cubs. But brown hyenas are also major kleptos that'll pocket kills from their competition. Sometimes they'll body a 5v1 against cheetahs and walk away with their food and their pride. Two things I think are pretty dope about them is one, even though they're not dogs, brown hyenas have a social structure a lot like a wolf pack with the two parents and all their kids. And number two is that they managed to turn an abandoned town into a nursery. There's an old ghost town in the Namibian desert that has no trace of humans, yet brown hyenas use the desolate houses and empty mines as dens to keep their kids in while they go grocery shopping, which can mean up to 20 miles of walking a day. One famous hyena mother has apparently lived in these forgotten ruins for 15 years and even raised nine generations of cubs and counting. Moral of the story, hyenas deserve better and Simba really ain't shit for putting them out like this. But that ain't even close to how hard humanity has violated the last animal here. This isn't a raccoon, skunk, or a cat. It's one of the members of the cat side of the carnivore family, specifically called Filiform, which makes this result of an over-the-hedge orgy more related to hyenas than they are to the raccoons they cosplay as. The African civet is only one of over a dozen species of civets seasoned across Africa and Asia. The raccoon colorway is actually a form of camouflage since the patterns break up their outline and makes it harder to spot them in the bush. You might not have seen them in the flesh and fur, but you might have heard about them especially if you drink coffee. Because the world's most expensive and gate-kept coffee, Kopi Luwak, is made from the coffee beans found in the poop of the Asian palm civet. How they literally put two and two together to come up with that, I don't want to know. And of course, this demand could lead to civets being captured, caged, and force-fed coffee beans in order to supply. Full disclosure, I don't drink coffee so I really wouldn't know, but there's no way it can be worth it. And it's not even the only civet to get its brown eye exploited by people. That was a wild sentence. African civets produce a musk, this white, nasty smelling stuff that scientists like to call civet butter. Civets use it to mark their territory, but somehow people figured out they can use its butt glands for perfume, specifically Chanel number no. 5. And they get the juices they need by scraping it from the civet's pink balloon knot. So if you have some Chanel on deck and it says natural ingredients on the bottle, there's a good chance it came from... yeah. But yeah, civets in general are pretty cool. They can actually be super affectionate when raised by people. And if I had to pick a favorite, I'd have to go with Austin's palm civet. Literally only because I think they're cool looking. I mean, you're gonna tell me I'm wrong? So yeah, that's 10 animals you've probably never seen before. Except, when I was making this list, I was stuck at 11 and could not decide what animal to leave off. But then I realized, I have free will, and this is my channel, so y'all get a bonus animal and probably my favorite animal on here. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the tree kangaroo. Specifically, the Goodfellows tree kangaroo. Like the name suggests, this kangaroo's entire personality is trees. They're mad awkward on land, but they can jump from a height of three stories and fully tank the fall damage. They're kind of like the cuss cuss because of where and how they live. A lot of people in the same area as them have no clue they exist. But unlike the cuss cuss who looks like the drop bear Aussies keep warning us about, the good fellow genuinely looks like a tree loving teddy bear. And it's not just them, there's 14 flavors of branch bears, including the incredibly rare tenkyle with only hundreds of them alive today. And the Wandiwa tree kangaroo who scientists genuinely believe went extinct after going off the grid for 90 years. Until they randomly just popped up out of nowhere. And for y'all that don't understand, it's like the science equivalent of Tupac being alive this entire time in Cuba, proving that when it comes to nature, the only thing we know for sure is that we really don't know much at all. But that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram for more consistent uploads as you wait for the next video. And if you'd like to support this channel even more, becoming a patron on Patreon earns you access to exclusive content, videos before I post them, and you can even help vote on my next video. In fact, if you're already a patron, you probably voted for this one. But like I always say, it's more for like leftover money you're not gonna miss, don't feel like you have to give anything because really, if you watched the video this far, you've done more than enough. But make sure you drink water, hug your mother, do let me know how many animals I stumped you on, I'm actually curious. And I'ma see y'all in the next one.